and I just want to let everybody know how thankful I am to be here among you still, because we're still in the Thanksgiving spirit, and I am very thankful for my church family. Very, very thankful. So if, if we could, I know we have others that are still coming on, but uh, we don't want to prolong um, the Bible study. It's a great lesson. So if we can please bow our heads for a word of prayer before we get started. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we give thanks today, Lord. But we not only thank you because of the one day of Thanksgiving, Lord. We thank you every day. We thank you for allowing us to wake up in the morning, Lord, clothed and in our right minds, Lord. We thank you for the activity of our lives, Lord. And Lord, we just ask that you continue to bless this church as we go higher and higher in you. Lord, I want to thank you for the teachers that we have on for our Bible study lesson. Lord, I want to thank you for our pastor and first lady and all our mothers, Lord. Lord, we just thank you and we thank you and we thank you. We want to give honor to your son, Jesus, for without him, Lord, no telling where we would be. So I also want to ask that you just touch on the needs of everyone, Lord, the needs of healing, the needs of financing, Lord, or just the ones that are just even thinking about suicide, Lord. We know that this time of year, we are high in suicides, Lord. I ask that you go in and touch their minds, Lord. Touch their minds and just let them know that you are there for them, that you have always been there and you will continue to be there. We ask that you go into the homes of the ones that are not able to move the convalescent home. We ask that you go into the jails and the hospices along with the rehab centers, Lord. Lord, we ask that you touch our jobs, our co-workers, our neighbors, Lord, our family. Lord, we just we just want you to just bless everyone around the world, Lord. We know that we have another variant coming out as far as, you know, this disease that's going around in Africa, Lord. We just ask that you touch them, Lord. We thank you for the scientists that you've given us to try to make everything get a little bit better. But we know that you, Lord, you have the last say in everything that goes on in this world today. So, Lord, we just ask that you just touch the people's minds so they would draw nearer to you, Lord. And also, Lord, all the ones that are in bereavement, um, ones that we know and we don't know, um, like Mother Miller, um, I can't recall anyone else, but you just continually just uplift them in their hearts, Lord, because we know, Lord, you don't make any mistakes. So, Lord, continue to bless us, bless our lesson, bless our teachers, bless our families, and bless our church. And we ask all of these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, I am not going to prolong this. Because soon as I read this, the old song came to mind. The harvest is plentiful and the neighbors are few. Actually, I was supposed to be playing that when I came on for your listening pleasure, but I didn't make it. But we have a wonderful teacher on today. And um, Minister uh, Elder Terrell, did you want me to read out the background or devotional reading or um, everything like that? Or did you just want to dive into the lesson? Oh, we can just go straight into the lesson. Okay. No, so, okay. so ladies and gentlemen, can we please say amen to Elder Terrell Bassett as he comes? Amen. 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 Yeah. God bless you all on this evening. Amen. You guys hear me okay? Um, yes. All righty. All righty. Okay. So tonight we are doing uh, lesson 12. Uh, prepare to receive the harvest. Amen. Um, we didn't get to do it last uh, last Tuesday because of the holidays. And I was looking forward to this one. And I was like, well, we got one more. How about we just knock this one out? Amen. So uh, we're going to do prepare to receive a harvest. Amen. Um, we will be in our background readings. We'll be in Genesis, uh, 
Proverbs, uh, Matthew, Luke, and Mark, uh, three of the four Gospels, and John, actually. So we're going to be in all the Gospels tonight. Amen. And also our central verse, which will be from Galatians. Amen. And it says, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap, if we faint not. Amen. I want to start with our introduction, and then we're going to get into uh, the lesson, prepare to receive a harvest. Amen. Uh, our introduction says, when a person wants to be successful in his business or whatever he wants to do, he must make plans and prepare. Likewise, if a man wants a good harvest, he must make plans to do so. If a man plants a field, he must prepare the field before he can put in the seed. Then he must wait on the rain and the sun before the crops come forth. Before there can be a harvest, the seed must germinate and bring along the fruit. There is a natural and a spiritual. As the natural seed must germinate, the holy seed must germinate. Amen. It must germinate. So we're talking about harvest. We're talking about uh, planting. Amen. And I don't know if, if, if there's any planters on here tonight, uh, but if you are, um, you probably want to love this. This lesson, Amen. I had to, I had to go figure some things out because I'm not, I'm not a planter naturally, Amen. I don't mind planting spiritually, but I'm not a natural planter. Uh, if you gave me a bag of seeds and told me to go outside, I wouldn't know what to do. I would, I would dig and I throw the seed. I know the basics, but I, I didn't know all of the steps. The steps, you know. And you find out that uh, when, when, when Jesus used parables and when the Bible uses all these parables, there's so many steps. But they make sense, you know, when you take it from the natural and you apply it spiritually. And it just lets us know that God is the ultimate uh, artist. Amen. The way he creates things and put these things together. So tonight we're going to we're going to we're going to learn how to plant some stuff. Amen. Plant some things. So uh, we read in the introduction that before you can get to the point of harvesting, there are several steps you must go through. And it says that before. In that introduction, it says, if a man plants a field, he must prepare the field, right? So I just can't get up right now and go in the backyard and start throwing seeds in the ground and just expect the harvest to come, amen? It doesn't work that like that. It's a, it's a preparation. It's a process, amen? It's a process. So the field has to be prepared before you can even plant a seed, amen? A field has to be dried out. Amen. Before you can start planting. Amen. You can't just start planting in, 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 in mud and in, in all of these things. It has to be dry. Amen. So there are certain steps that go along with planting. Amen. And the first step or one of the first steps is they plow the field. Amen. And, you know, there's big machines and, and they drive along the field. And what the machine does is it turns the top of the soil over. And it pulls up the weeds and all the debris from the ground. Amen. That's what the plower does. It gets down in that dirt and just starts lifting stuff up and flipping it upside down, you know, to get all the loose things out of the dirt. After plowing, then you till the field or uh, harrow. H-A-R-R-O-W. It's called harrow. And what this does is it loosens the soil to make it easier to plant. Amen. This is also the point where you can add your fertilizer. Amen. You add your fertilizer or whatever your, your growth stimulant is to, to get the, the, the plant, you know, activated and working. And then after that, you rake the field. Amen. And when you rake the field, this breaks up all of the clumps of the soil and it evenly distributes all of the soil across the field. Amen. So it's like bedding. You're creating your bed. Amen. This is called preparing the field. Now, this has to be done before you start the process uh, of, of growing plants and harvesting. All right. So then the field after this process is ready for seeds. Amen. After the seed is planted, nature does the rest. Amen. After the seed is planted, the rain. Amen. The sun. The seed is watered by the rain and it's fed by the sun sunshine amen and that's a process called photosynthesis it's when the, the plants they eat the, the sunlight and it gives them all the nutrients and then it grows amen so god uses nature 
amen, to fulfill this process of growing from a seed. Amen. Our part in that is we got to make sure that we get that land ready. Amen. Has to be ready. From that point on, once the field is ready and we prepare and the rain comes and the sun comes and the plant begins to grow, we can receive the harvest. Amen. Receive the harvest. Now, keep saying that word harvest in our key terms. That is one of the definitions. Uh, can somebody read the definition of harvest in key terms? It says the, the season for gathering in crops, the beginning of the harvest. The act or process of gathering in a crop, the quantity, the quantity of a natural product assembled in a single season. Amen. Thank you, Sister Benson. So, it is a season of gathering crops. Amen. Just gathering crops, and uh, it says a quantity of natural product assembled in a single season. So, it's everything you get from a single season. That's your harvest. Amen. And the most important stage, or two of the most important stages of the harvesting is the sowing and the what? So, reaping. Reaping. The reaping. Reaping and the sowing. Amen. The reaping and the sowing. Thank you, Brother Benson. Thank you, Benson. That's important to reap and to sow. Amen. So, what does it mean? What does it mean to sow? Does anybody have an idea what it means to sow? S O W. Sow. To put. Just off the top of your head. What is it, Angie? Oh, to um, distribute your seed, to throw out your seed into the field, into the into the ground. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Distribute your seed. Amen. Brother Michael said to plant or scatter. Amen. Anything else? Because that, that's the gist of it. Amen. Exactly. As Sister Angie said and Brother Michael said, it means to plant. Amen. It means to scatter over the land for or the earth. But it means to scatter for growth. Amen. The whole point of sowing is growth. Now, on the other side, there is the reaping. And I'm pretty sure we know what reap is. Amen. Give me what you got. What is reap? What does it mean to reap? To gather what you have sown. Yeah. The, 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 uh, the, the, um, to gather your fruit that has grown from the seeds in this season. <laughs> Amen. Self-explanatory. You, you guys heard of the reaper, right? And the reaper, when the reaper comes, and they call him death, and death is the reaper, and what he do? He come to gather the, the dead souls. Amen. So to reap just means to gather. It means to take, um, and it means to cut with the sickle. And the sickle is that big old sharp hook, you know, that you see in the cartoons when the grim reaper walking around. Amen. Uh, it's also in Revelation. Amen. But that's what it means to reap. Uh, an important part of reaping is it means to get as a return or a result. Amen. So when you're reaping, you're getting something as a return or it is the result of something. It is the result of sowing. Amen. So reaping and sowing, they work together. So if we go back all the way to Genesis, and we're going to look at the origin of labor. Where did labor come from? Amen. Where did, where did the, why do we have to work? Where did all of this come from? Because this is important when we look at the harvest. And if we go to Genesis, the 8th chapter. The 8th chapter. In verses 20 through 22. And if you get it, read it for me, please. Genesis 8, 20 through 22. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord. And took of every clean animal and of every clean bird. And offer burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a soothing aroma. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake. Although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, nor will I again destroy every living thing as I have done. 
while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and winter, excuse me, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. Amen. God bless you, Brother Michael. Verse 22. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Now, we hear this often uh, when, when, when Mother Dial and, and uh, Mother McKnight get up to do offer. Amen. They say, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest it shall not cease. Amen. So, we're going back to Mo, uh, Noah, excuse me. And this was after the flood. So, all we know, we, we remember that Noah, you know, uh, God told him to build this ark and take two of every creature and bring them on this ark because he was going to destroy the land. Amen. Just, uh, all of these uh, rebellion had happened. Amen. So, God was starting over tired of it starting over amen so this takes place after the flood and god vows to never curse the ground again for man's sake amen after noah's sacrifice amen after they landed and they got off noah gave god a sacrifice and after that sacrifice god was pleased not so much in the fact that there was a sacrifice but more more of the fact that there was peace now between heaven and earth amen the rebellion was gone because of the flood. And God had rectified the issue of rebellion and started fresh with clean beasts, clean fowls. And guess what? The rest of the people who were obedient to him, amen, that were on that boat. So God vows to never curse the ground, which means he never he vows to never flood the earth. As long as the earth remained, amen, things would not cease. And he speaks on seasons and time. They will not cease. And he also references planting and harvesting. Amen. Why? Why reference planting and harvesting? Amen. Seed, time, and harvest. Why is that important in this, in this new uh, found land? Why was that important? Amen. Seed time was sowing. Amen. And what does sowing mean? It means to scatter the land for growth. So in this particular time, the earth was due for sowing. Why is that? Because there was only eight people, <laughs> amen, that came off of that ark and a bunch of animals, which means that they needed to sow. They needed to scatter, amen. They needed to reproduce. They needed the reaping. They needed a harvest, amen, so the land could grow plentiful, amen, so the land could grow. So, in that time, it was due for season. They needed new land. They needed new growth. This also entails that man's work that had been ordained in Genesis, in the Garden of Eden, had not ceased just because the old land was destroyed, amen. And remember back in Genesis, in the third chapter, um, and in the 19th verse, it says, "In sweat of thy in the in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return." Now this was said after Adam and Eve they had sinned. Amen. So man, we had been ordained <laughs> to work to till the land. Amen. This is what we had to do. That was part of the punishment for rebellion. Now, when God had sent the flood and destroyed the land, that never changed. He never said that you guys don't have to work anymore. Oh, no. We still have to till the land. Amen. Because we were cursed by sin. And there was not a, a completion of sin, meaning that there was not a rectification for sin at that particular moment. There was a rectification for the rebellion that went on. God cleared the land. But sin still existed. There was no rectification for sin because Christ had not come yet. So that particular uh, um, vow never changed. Man still had to work. We still had to till the land. We still had to lay. Amen? You guys with me? Let me know. Amen. 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 All right. So, because of man's disobedience, he had to work. 
He had to labor to eat. Whereas before the fall, everything we needed was accessible in the garden. Amen. Sorry, Sister Lynn, I'm all in Genesis. <laughs> it was all accessible in the garden. So the curse never changed, although God wiped the entire world. Now, if we look in Genesis, the fourth chapter, in the second verse, it says, And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was the keeper of sheep. But Cain was what? A tiller of the ground. Amen. So this was after sin. Cain was still a tiller. Amen. So man still had the responsibility to work from Genesis. And it kept going and it flows all the way down. So this is why he says in this verse with Noah that seed time and harvest. It won't cease. It's not going to stop. Why? Because there, are, there will always be work for you and I to do as long as we are still here on earth. Amen. Amen. That's not going to change. So, this is the, the, the origin of labor. I mean, it started from the very beginning, and the Bible declares that seed time, which is planting, and harvest will not cease as long as the earth remains. So, we got an understanding of, of labor and, and, and how this came into fruition and how we got to the point of labor. It's all, it's all going to tie into harvest. Amen? It's all going to tie in together. Uh, so, that's the origin of labor. Let's move into... The season of labor. Any questions or comments before I move forward? Amen. Let's look at Proverbs. Proverbs. And this is one of our background readings. Proverbs 10 and 5. Proverbs 10 and 5. If you have it, you can read it. He that gathers in the summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causes shame. Amen. He that gathereth in the summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causes shame. Amen. When we read in Genesis, that seed time and harvest and seasons will not cease any longer. Uh, and as long as there are seasons, there are times to plant and there are times to receive the harvest. Amen. And we know that from Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes uh, 3, 1 and 2. And it tells us to everything there was a season and a time and a purpose under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. Amen. So Proverbs, it shows us in this 10 and 5, it shows us that the best time to gather or to reap is in the summer. Amen. Now in the winter, it was time of rest. So if you gather in the summer, but you were resting in the winter, when do you think the time to sow was. I say that again. If you're gathering in the summer, but you're resting in the winter, when did they sow? There's only two seasons left. In the fall. <laughs> in, the fall. in the fall. Spring. In the fall. Fall. Spring. Spring. Fall. It all depends what you what you plant. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it I mean, in that's the a trick question. <laughs> in the fall. That's a trick question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. It depends on what you plant. Amen. It absolutely depends on what you're planting. Uh, there were certain things that you couldn't plant um, in the spring. There were certain things that you couldn't plant in the fall. There, there are also things, even though they rested in the winter, there are things that can be planted in the winter. So every season, there, there are things that can be planted. So let's just, let's just, you know, not to say that you can't plant because there are things that can be planted in the winter. But in those times. They rested in the winter because it was cold, amen, and they, they gathered in the summer. And they would usually plant in the spring because springtime is what brought the rain, which would allow the seed to be fed and to grow, amen? So in this particular uh, in this particular time, we're talking about the spring, amen? So they were so in the spring, amen, the rain would come, you know, the spring showers and all those things, and then they would reap in the summer. Now, here we have a, a young man 
who was wise. He gathered when it was time to gather. The time to gather was summer, and he was wise. He gathered when it was time. But then there's a, a, a contradiction of another that sleep. Amen. And when it was time to gather, he knocked out. <laughs> he in the house snoring. Now, we might not see that as a problem. It's like, okay, well, he can just wake up and, and, and get it. But the overall picture is that when it is time to do the work, make yourself available to do the work. Because if you miss the harvest, guess what? The crops go bad. So you did all of this laboring and preparing for nothing. Amen? Now, spiritually, that says something. Amen? You ever do a whole bunch of work? Just so you can't even utilize what you've done? Isn't that frustrating? Isn't that discouraging? Amen? God's tell you to do all of these things and you get all of these things done. Oh, you know what? We're not even going to do that today. We're going to say that to next week. So, I mean, I put all this time in. Amen? And I missed out on that. Or you had to do something, but then you couldn't be at a particular place at a particular time because you had somewhere else to go. You know, and then you try to rush there to, 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 to get the last end of it. And you get there at the last minute and it's like, it's over. It's like, man, I missed out. Amen. Why? Because I did not arrive in the right season, in the right time. Amen. And that's important. That is important. So when you sow in that springtime, again, it's because the water, it brings the rain. Amen. And the land, the land is easier to till. Amen. So we know that this wise, this wise son, he was wise because he knew when to sow and he knew when to reap. The other one who slept says that he caused a shame because he may have known when to sow, but he did not know that he has to be in expectation of the harvest. Anything you sow, you have to have an expectation of a harvest. Otherwise, your sowing is in vain. Hey Amen. If I'm just throwing seeds out, I'm like, hey, they, 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 they grow when they grow. I come back here in a couple months. In a couple months, I come back and the crops are all faded and, and worn and wither. I missed out because I did not have an expectation. Amen. So you have to have an expectation whenever you sow. Now, let's look at that spiritual. What does that mean? <laughs> That means a lot spiritually. We can go a whole different ways, amen. But spiritually, amen, if you if you sow into something, should you not have an expectation? Mm -hmm. I'm asking a question. Yes. Should you should not have an expectation. Yes. Yes. You should. You should. Amen. In any in anything you do, any work you do. Now it's 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 not that you don't do the work just so you can get what you want from it. You do the work because the work allows you, amen, to reap. Amen. The work is what brings the benefit. Amen. So the work is essential. And then the result of that, the reaping, that's what makes the work worth it. Amen. It makes it worth it. It makes it worth it. So don't sleep when it's harvest time. That's the moral of the story. Do not sleep when it's harvest time. Uh, if we look at uh, Jeremiah, the 8th chapter and the 20th verse, it says, The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. We missed out. <laughs> we missed out on our harvest. We missed out. I don't know about you, but I don't want to miss out. It's, there's a harvest that is coming in the end. I definitely don't want to miss out on that one. Amen. There is a harvest that is coming. Amen. And you don't want to miss out on that. I'm talking about second coming of Christ. Amen. <laughs> How many of y'all want to be raptured out of here? Amen. 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 So, amen. Proverbs. Proverbs 20, verse 4. And it says, The slugger will not plow by reason of the cold. Therefore shall he beg and harvest and have nothing. Amen. The slugger 
will not plow by reason of the cold. Now, earlier I gave you some steps into preparing the land. Anybody remember what step plowing was? I see your hand, Sister Man. Number one. Number one. Number one. Amen. So, Proverbs 24 says, The slugger will not plow by reason of the cold. So, this man, this lazy, that's what a slugger is, it's a lazy individual. Uh, they refuse to even start working. Why? Because it's cold. Amen. So they go out there, got the seed ready, you know, the land is all ready to be tilled and plowed. And instead of working, he said, you know what? It's kind of cold out here. I'm not doing this. I don't have the time. I don't have the bandwidth. I got time to be out here freezing, shivering. Amen. Because of that, time goes by. Amen. He's out of season. So then when he tries to go out there and plow, guess what? The harvest, the season for harvesting has arrived already. So now you don't have anything. Why? Because you refuse to work in the season that you were supposed to work in. Amen. You refuse to do the work. You wanted the result, but you didn't want the work. So you missed out on the blessing. Because you chose not to put in the work in the appropriate time. Amen. Now, if plowing is usually done in the fall, which means that it was cold at that time. This was after summer. So it's, it's, it's no longer hot. Amen. The, the sun is no longer beaming. It's cold. So if we look at the, the sequence when it comes to the seasons, in fall, that's when they prep the field. I mean, this is when all the plowing and the tilling, this is when all that was done. In winter, that's when they let the land rest. So after the field was prepped, the land would need to rest. Amen. And if you if you read the Bible in the Old Testament, it talks a lot about having the making or letting the land rest. I mean, that was real important to the Hebrews. That land needed to rest. Then after winter, we go into spring. And in spring, this is where they sow the seed. And then summer is where they reap the harvest. So everything was in order. Amen. Everything was in order. There was a season and a time to do everything. So if the lazy worker refused to labor in the fall because it was cold, by the end of the season, when the season changes, the ground is not ready for seed anymore. Therefore, he'll have to beg. Amen. Because he did not put in the work to receive the harvest. What does that mean for us? You and I, amen, we consistently expect God to bless us, yet we don't put in any type of work to receive the benefits of the blessing. Amen. You have to sow in order to reap, and you have to labor before you sow. What does that mean? I can't give you love. If I never show you love. Amen. Does that make sense? Because showing is the work. But giving is the seed. Amen. So if I tell you I love you. But you don't ever see it. I'm not doing the work. Amen. I'm planting the seed before I'm doing the work. You should see me love you. Before I even have to tell you. That's why Jesus said, if you love me, what's the work? Keep my commandments. Don't just say it. I want to see the work. Amen. Amen. I can't say I serve God. Yet not walk in holiness. Amen. Amen. Walking is the work. Confessing is the seed. And you know what the harvest is? Salvation. Amen. That's what I reap. So if I say that I'm holy, the work is I got to walk that. I got to live by what I say. I can't plant that seed and not do that labor. It doesn't work like that. Amen. 
That's what it means for us in these times. Amen. And then also, you can't plant orange seeds and then expect an apple tree. Amen? It doesn't work like that. You can't plant apple seeds and expect the lemon tree. It's not going to happen. Why? Because you cannot produce outside of what you are. What does that mean? If you have corruption on the inside and you're planting seeds, you're not going to plant or get good results. Why? Because the seeds that you are planted are corrupt. Amen? Corrupt seeds cannot bring forth good fruit. Amen. Matthew 7 and 17 says, even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree, what? Bringeth forth evil fruit. Amen. So if I'm sowing and I'm, I can't go outside of who I am. So if I'm naturally just a, 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 a mean person, if I'm naturally just an evil, despicable person, amen, I'm planting those seeds. And I'm not reaping any good from that. Why? Because I cannot plant outside of who I am. If I'm naturally an orange, I'm planting orange seeds. And guess what? I expect orange trees. I'm not going to plant orange seeds and be expecting lemons because that's not who I am. That's not who you are. So if you are walking in holiness, hallelujah, the seeds that you are planting are good seed. Thank you, Lord. And guess what you reap from that? Good fruit. Amen. Incorruptible fruit. Amen. Now, before we move forward, uh, we're talking about different seasons and different plant, different planting times. And Sister Cheryl and uh, Mother Dow, amen, they said that you can plant in fall, but you can also sow in spring. And the reason why is because every one of us we all enter different seasons at different times. Even if you look at the, the world, look at Earth. There's a northern hemisphere and there's a southern hemisphere. Now, in the northern hemisphere, our winter starts in December. Amen? Our winter starts in December. In the southern hemisphere, their winter starts in June. Totally different. What does that tell us? that there are different seasons for different people. So just because I'm reaping a harvest right now in my life doesn't mean that I expect you to be reaping one in your life because this not this may not be your season to reap. But guess what? As long as you are continually doing the work, hallelujah, as long as you are continually planting the seed, your season is coming. Thank you, Lord. Your season is coming. Hallelujah. All right, let's move forward. Any questions or comments before we move forward? Amen. All right. Let's look at spiritual labor. Now, we talked about the manual labor, the origins of, of labor, and we talked about the seasons of labor. So now let's, let's, let's talk about spiritual labor. Spiritual labor. This is where... Jesus comes into play. Amen. Now we're gonna we're gonna go to the book of John and the fourth chapter. And before we, we read the verses, we're gonna start at the, the 31st verse, and we're gonna go to the 38th. But I want to give you the context of what happens before we get down to this point. Um, in this fourth chapter, Jesus meets the woman, the woman at the well, amen. And she was a Samaritan. Amen. And we're familiar with the story familiar with the story. She's at the well. Jesus meets her at the at the well. And if you read the story, Jesus exposes her for who she is. Amen. She wasn't with the man she was with. <laughs> she was with some other people's men. Amen. And he identifies who he is. Then she accepts who he is. And this process was Jesus planting a seed for this Samaritan woman. Amen. He was planting a seed. Ironically, he was planting a seed, but he was talking about water. 
they got something. He's planting a seed to this woman, but he's telling her that if you knew who I was, <laughs> amen, you wouldn't have to thirst any longer, amen. He was talking about seeds and planting the whole conversation. So when I read that, I was like, Jesus was planting a seed and also at the same time talking about him being the water. Because why? Because he was going to be the water that watered the seed that was planted in this woman. Amen. And we know the seed was planted because what she go off and do in that 29th verse. Come, see a man which told me all things I ever did. Is not this the Christ? She spread. She scattered it. Amen. The seed that was planted in her, she took the seed and she scattered it. Told everybody about it. Amen. That's how it works. You see, we live, we're living this harvest out. We're living this planting. We're living it out. Thank you, Lord. Now, so we get down to the 31st verse in that in that chapter. And uh, Brother Mike, do you mind reading uh, John 4, 31 through 38? I'm sorry, I Isn't see it? a hand. I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. LG style 04. Yes. Uh, good evening. That's me, Elder uh, Batson. Oh, how you doing? That's uh, Sister Thurstell. <laughs> when you was talking about uh, planting the seed, I was just thinking, it just came to me that when you plant something in your spirit, and it is always something that is positive, that is continually planted in that spirit, it will grow. But the key is, it has to be planted, and it has to be watered, and it has to be nurtured, and it has to be taken care of daily. So it's like a fight. You know, you, you fight to keep plants alive. Because, you know, I see plants at my job, and they're always asking me to water them. So while I'm watering them, I'm like, I know y'all thirsty. Um, drink this water. You know, thirst off this water, because this water is going to make you grow. It's going to make you strong. So when you keep talking about you know, planting and the sowing and the seed. You just have my spirit like that's right. You got to you got to water it. You got to nurture it. You got to take care of it, and that's what you got to do with your spirit when you want your spirit to get closer to the Lord. You got to nurture it. You got to take care of it. You got to plant it. You got to feed it, just like you you know they feed the plants food and stuff to make them grow and make them stronger. The same thing you have to do with your spirit. You have to feed it with the Word of God, with knowledge, with wisdom, with understanding, with kindness. With love oh don't get me started okay I, I just have to say that amen god bless you sister t you right on track you right on track amen um brother michael can you read those verses for me in the meantime his disciples urged him saying rabbi eat but he said to them i have food to eat for which you do not know therefore the disciples said to one another has anyone brought him anything to eat Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. And he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life, that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this, the saying is true, one sows and another reaps. I seek you to reap that for which you have not labored. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labors. Amen. God bless you, Brother Michael. <clears throat> so, um, Jesus is sitting here with his disciples, and then they're telling him to eat. <laughs> Jesus says, I have meat to eat that you know not of. And it's just, just like Jesus, amen, to, to take something so simple, amen, and turn it into something spiritual. Amen. The disciples were just sitting there, they were just ready to eat. But Jesus was thinking about his work. Amen. I don't need to eat. I, I got meat. I have meat. Amen. That's why he said that man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Amen. He was about his father's business. But when we look at the 38th verse. And Jesus declares that the disciples are reaping from something they did not labor for. Amen. And it says that other men labored. 
They've done all the work, and the disciples have benefited from their work. So then my question is, uh, who are the other men that have labored, and what did the disciples reap from those men's harvest? Amen? From those men's work. Who are these other men, and what did the disciples reap from those men? Amen? And in order to, to get a clearer picture of that, we have to go back up into those verses. Amen? And we have to look at that 34th verse. And it says, Jesus said unto them, my meat is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. <clears throat> now, let's preface this verse with what was said from 31 to 33. Amen. And in 31, 33, Jesus compares natural meat with spiritual meat. Okay. So when we look at it from that context, the context we'll be coming from will be speaking in comparison with natural things and spiritual things. Amen? Because this is how Jesus started his conversation. He took something natural and then he turned it into spiritual. So for the rest of the conversation, we have to look at it from a natural standpoint, but also a spiritual standpoint. Amen? And this is how we learn how to break down what Jesus is saying to us. Look at it from the natural standpoint and then compare it to the spiritual and then you'll get what he's trying to say. So in that 35th verse he says, say not ye there are four months and then cometh a harvest. Now what is that? That's natural. Amen. Then he says, behold I say unto you lift up your eyes and look on the fields for they are white already with harvest. Now that's spiritual. Amen? Now Jesus wasn't talking about naturally, look up y'all, look, the, the, the harvest is out there. No, he wasn't talking about that. Amen? He took a natural occurrence and then he turned it into a spiritual thing. The natural occurrence was that there's a harvest coming. The spiritual was that the harvest is already here. All of those Samaritans, amen, that are out there, guess what? They are the harvest. Amen? It's them. Thank you, Lord. So, Jesus, amen, and we know it's them because when he talked to the woman at the well, what did he do? He planted a seed. Amen? Spiritually, he planted a seed. The harvest was ready for the Samaritans because Jesus planted the seed in her, and then she went out and she scattered. Amen. Come see a man who told me about myself. <laughs> Amen. She scattered it, which is was a part of his work. Amen. Which means that Jesus was the laborer. Amen. He was the laborer. His mere arrival was the work of God. Amen. So he had already labored the field just by being who he was, just by his coming. Amen. He had already labored the field. He had already paved the way. Thank you, Lord. And then that field was prepared to receive the seed, which is what he gave the woman at the well. So Jesus planted the seed by preaching the word. And Jesus is the word. So when he told her who he was, that was the word of God that was planted in that Samaritan woman. Amen. And then she went out and she spread the word. Thank you, Lord. So she spread the seed that Jesus planted. And guess what? The disciples had nothing to do with that conversation. Amen. They had nothing to do with Jesus spreading the gospel. At that particular time, when he was here, it was all him. There was only one other person who had paved the way for him. And who was that man? I see your lips. His cousin, John the Baptist. John the Baptist, amen. John the Baptist was also a laborer. Why? Because he paved the way. He tilled the ground so that it can receive the seed that Jesus was coming to bring 
to all of us, to the Jews, amen, to those Samaritans. So guess what? The disciples were benefiting from what Jesus was planting when he was here. And what did the disciples benefit? They benefited a harvest of saved men and women who would follow Christ. And it was a benefit to them because they were no longer just 12, but they had multiplied. They had scattered just like the seed is supposed to do. And they benefited from that because this is how the foundation of the church had begun with the seed that Jesus planted. They benefited from that because when Jesus left, guess what? Now they were in charge of laboring. Now they were in charge of planting seeds. And they had men, they had brothers and sisters in Christ that could help them do that. Amen? Amen. So that's what that verse means. So then, let's look at 36. It says, And they that reapeth and receiveth wages... And gathereth fruit unto eternal life, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. The reaper and the sower rejoice together. Now, the reapers were the disciples, and the sower was Christ. Amen. The sower was the John the Baptist. Amen. They would be able to rejoice together because of the harvest. Amen. That would come from the seed that was planted by the one sower, Jesus Christ. Amen. So the disciples reap in this verse because of the preparation of Christ. He was the sower. He did the watering. And the disciples reap the harvest of the saved souls, which is why in verse 37, it says one. Amen. Sower. That's Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. You guys understand? Are we getting it? Let me know. Amen. Uh -huh. Getting it. Amen. Amen. So we know who. Amen. So now, now I'm gonna ask that question again. It's a trick question. Who are the other men that have labored before the disciples? Uh. <laughs> Got to look at all of those foundational prophets that came before that laid the groundwork for this to, to come to pass. Bless you. Amen. 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 The prophets, the John the Baptists, amen. The Elijah, the Isaiahs, amen. The Ezekiels, amen. All of these that had worked and laid this groundwork all the way up to the coming of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Amen. These are the other men. Amen. And the disciples benefited from their hard work. Now, it doesn't mean that, you know, the disciples were lazy and they didn't have to do nothing. No, no. Because they had to work. Amen. They had to pick up where those men left off, where Jesus himself left off. They had to pick it up and they had to move this thing forward now. We got to plant more seeds. Amen. We got to do some more harvesting. This thing will not end. Why? Because seed time and harvest shall not cease. Hallelujah. As long as we're here, we are working, working, working. Which brings us to our next, our next subject. The willing workers. Amen. The willing workers. Luke, the 10th chapter in the second verse. Hallelujah. Or the first and the second verse. Luke 10, 1 and 2. It says, after these, you said Luke 10, 1 and 2? Yes, Luke 10, chapter 10, verses 1 and 2. Okay, it says, after these things, the Lord appointed other 70. Also, I'm sorry. And sent them, sent them two and two before his face into every city and place, whether he himself would come. Therefore said he unto them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest 
that, th that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Amen. The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Amen. The seed was scattered. Amen. It was scattered. Jesus scattered those seeds. Amen. The Samaritan woman, she went and she spread the seeds. Amen. So the harvest was plentiful. We could see the harvest and then growing and growing. And then one thing about a seed is that uh, you will only reap what you what you put in. Amen. So if I sow one seed, uh, I'm going to reap uh, the quantity of what I can get out of one seed, which isn't much. Amen. Depending on what you're planting. Amen. Now, if you plant one 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 uh one seed for apples, you may get a, a tree full of apples. Amen. But just imagine if you planted ten of those seeds. Amen. So the more you sow, what? The more you reap. Amen. The more you put in, the more you get out. Amen. Put in a little, you're gonna get out a little. You put in a lot, you're gonna get out a lot. Thank you, Lord. So the seed was scattered. The harvest was plentiful. So much to the point that Jesus had to send 70 out in pairs. That's 30. That's a group of 35 people. Amen. Two a pair. Two times 35 is seven. So he had 35 groups. And he was going out in pairs. And the disciples was 12 of them. Amen. So that's 82 in total. Now this world is our field. And God desires laborers to put in the groundwork so that we'll be able to plant good seed for the unbeliever. So, if this world is our field, amen, and you and I, we put in the groundwork, we are the laborers. What is our labor? What is our labor? Is it to go out and plant the seed? And go out and plant the seed. But what 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 is what's the how do we define that? Like when somebody looks at you and say, "Oh, I, I I can see your work." How is that defined? What is it defined by? Like but the way you, how you live, is it how you live your life? The way you live your life. Amen. Let's let's look at scripture. Let's look at John thirteen. John 13, 34, and 35. John 13, 34, and 35. It says, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. But by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Amen. Let's look at another scripture. Galatians 15, 22 through 26. And it says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. So again, my question is, what is our labor? Showing love. <laughs> love one another. Love one another. Amen. If I go out and tell everybody that I'm a preacher. Amen. I'm a preacher. Come see me preach. Amen. And they see me on a random Tuesday outside cussing somebody out. They see me on a random Wednesday. You know what I mean? Sipping a little something telling somebody uh i hate them they ain't nothing amen not being kind amen 
slapping somebody across the face? Are they going to be willing to receive any seed from me? No. No. Why? Because my labor has been in vain. Because I'm not living out, this goes back to what we talked about earlier, I'm not living out what I say I am. Amen? Because if I love you, I show that and that's the work. So my works are seen through the fruits of the Spirit. They're seen through my love. They're seen through my joy. They're seen through my peace. They're seen through my long-suffering. They're seen through my temperance. They're seen through loving my neighbor. Nobody wants to get any type of information about Christ from you when they see that you are not living what you claim to be living. Your seed will not go into that soil. So your work has to be what you claim you are. Amen? That's the work. We have to live this thing out. That's the work. Hallelujah. Your labor is your obedience in Christ. Thank you, Lord. This is why James said that faith without works is dead. Now, we know that our deeds are not going to get us into heaven and our deeds don't uh, earn us salvation. That's what Paul said. It's not, it's not what we do. It's not the things that we do that we earn salvation. We don't earn salvation. Amen. But the work of salvation in my heart should show outwardly. And this is the work. Amen. Yes, um, Elder Vatson, and I mean, for me, some people just say that it's hard, but I, I just don't, I just don't feel that it is because if you have the love of God, and if you think of how much God loves you, how could you not want to love someone just that much? How could you not want to love someone and how could you not want to have a kind heart or kind spirit? How could you not? As, as much as God loves us, if he really gave us back all that we have done and all that all that I have done, all that me, 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 me have done in my life, how could I sit here and not love my brothers and sisters? I just can't. I just can't. I just got that love and I'm so grateful because I didn't get it from me. God gave it to me. So, yes, I'm going to love. And, you know, I hear people saying, I wish I didn't love that person. And I said, well, why not? It doesn't matter what they per that person did to you or that person did not do or give. It's still for you to love them regardless. Because when judgment day come, God ain't going to scoot them out the way and say, and scoot you out the way and say, uh-uh. Move out the way, cause um, it's, uh, you you want to take Sister T's uh, uh, what you Sister T done? No, no, no. It's all gonna be pointed at me. So I believe that we can show love. I believe that we can walk in that that spirit. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. And I know it can be done. I know it can be done. I know it. I, I believe it. I, I just have to get that out. Thank you. Amen. No problem. Amen. That's right. If, you, if, if, if the love of God is in us, amen, uh, that's something that has been planted in us. And it's our job to plant that seed into the world. Amen. And how can we plant a seed if our labor has been lazy? You know, if my love has been lazy, you know, if, if the fruits of my spirit uh, have not been showing themselves. To those yeah. who are supposed to accept the seed. Amen. 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 So how can we ex expect a harvest without proper preparation of labor? It is the labor of love that allows the field to be prepared to receive the seed of the word of God. Amen. 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 God bless you, Sister T. Thank so, you, Elder Baxter. Amen. So, pray that God might send uh, some people who don't mind loving. Amen. This is what what what, uh, what Jesus was saying. Amen to his uh, disciples. Amen. This is what he was saying to his disciples when he said, uh, "The harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into the harvest." 
Amen. That God would send some people that don't mind putting in the work, that don't mind loving their enemies. Amen. That don't mind having peace. Amen. In a time of sorrow, in a time of calamity, don't mind it having joy. Amen. In the time of sorrow. Amen. Because once you do these labors and you get these labors, amen, and people see, amen, how you go through these things, it gives them hope. Amen. It gives them hope. Amen. Let's look at our uh, our discussion. Amen. The second paragraph in our discussion. And it says, uh, he tells the believer to sow yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. And that is in Hosea 10 and 12. It says, God knows that if the believer is going to reap a harvest in the natural or the spirit, there are some things he must do before the crop is ready. He must prepare the ground so that he is told to break up the fallow ground. He must break up the foundation that has been neglected and has become hardened and cannot receive. Spiritually speaking, people's hearts are set. They are not sorry for their sins and open their hearts to receive the word of God and open up to his will. The believer must begin by sowing seeds of righteousness as he prays and intercedes as he earnestly seeks God until sinners will experience his faithful love and mercy. That is our labor. Amen. That is our labor. You and I, we've had hard hearts. Amen. I can't speak for you. I've had hard heart. It took God to come in. It took somebody to plant a seed. Amen. Somebody planted a seed. And it took God to come in and water that thing. And that thing grew until I became who I now am today. But it was the process. Amen. It was the process. Right. But somebody had to put in that groundwork. Amen. And they could not put in that groundwork and could not plant that seed if they were not working, if they not, were not living what they claimed they were living. Amen. I had to see love. I had to see that. Amen. Otherwise, I wouldn't have accepted the seed. Hallelujah. So do you understand what our work is, our labor? Amen. Amen. So. Now. We didn't talk about work. We didn't talk about the season. We didn't talk about the spiritual work. Amen. Let's get into the benefit of the harvest. Because you know, when you sow the seed, there is an expectation for the reaping. And that is the benefit. And that is our essential verse. Galatians 6 and 9. And it says, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap, if we faint not. Hallelujah. Let us not be weary in well-doing. In other words, don't be weary in your labor. Amen. Don't be weary in your loving. Amen. Don't give up now. Hallelujah. You've already started the process. You've already labored this far. And a seed has a germination process, as we read in the introduction. And the germination, it means that uh, there is a sprout that breaks through the seed. Amen. But it usually happens after a period of dormancy. Amen. So when the seed is planted, it's dormant. And you guys know what dormant is, right? There's inactivity. It's nothing going on. You heard of a, a dormant volcano? It means that it's not active. It's just there. It's idle. Amen. So when the seed is planted, the first process is the fact that it's inactive. It's not doing anything. 
<laughs> and a lot of times we 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 plant seeds and we don't see anything growing from it and we get frustrated and discouraged. Amen. But God is saying this is the germination process. If you want it to grow, you have to have patience. Whatever you sow, you have to have patience and you have to have an expectation for what you placed in that ground. Amen. So it has to go through a period of dormancy. It has to be inactive for a minute because it has to process itself. Okay, I'm a seed. I know that I got to flourish. <laughs> Amen. And I know I got to sprout eventually. But in that period of dormancy, guess what? The rain is helping. Hallelujah. The sunshine is helping. Thank you, Lord. So just because nothing seems to be growing does not mean that the process has not begun. Amen. In order for the seed to germinate, it needs a little rain. Now, when we think of rain, we automatically, oh, no. Nah. You think of rain, you think of storms. Hallelujah. Don't nobody want to get wet. I've never seen, outside of little kids, I've never seen nobody go out and run outside and just laugh and have a ball and just run in the rain. I ain't seen no adult. I may be wrong. But I've yet to see an adult <laughs> enjoy just standing out and flipping and spinning in the rain. Amen. We don't like it. The ladies don't want to get their hair wet. Amen. You don't want that. Hallelujah. So nobody likes the feeling of rain. Nobody likes the feeling of being wet. Hallelujah. But when you sow a seed, it takes some rain in order for the growth to happen. Amen. So the downpour does not always feel good, but guess what? I need it to grow. If I sow good seed, I reap good seed, but I got to wait for the harvest. And then it tells me, for in due season, we shall reap. Hallelujah. That means that I'll be able to see the benefit when it's time for the seed to grow. The only requirement. Thank you, Lord. The only requirement is that we faint not. When you sow your seed, the only requirement for you is that you do not give up hope. Hallelujah. We saw the man in Proverbs. We saw the wise son. Amen. Summertime, he said, well, it's time. The other one, Somewhere snoring. Why? Because he was not in expectation of his harvest. Thank you, Lord. He fainted. But when God says you plant a seed, be in expectation. Don't don't faint. Don't sleep. Don't give up. Don't let go. Don't be discouraged. Because the devil will come in and say, this thing's not growing. You're not going to get nothing from this. But the devil is a liar. Hallelujah. So your requirement is to not faint. Don't sleep. Don't faint waiting on your harvest because a harvest is not instantaneous. You can go out there right now and plant a seed. Do not expect that thing to grow tonight. It's not going to happen. Oh, hallelujah. But guess what? In due season, we shall reap. Hallelujah. In due season, I'm going to get my reward. In due season, I'm going to see the benefit Hallelujah, of what I've sown in Jesus Christ. So I'm waiting. And while I'm waiting, guess what? I'm still laboring. I'm still loving. I'm still having peace. I still have joy. I still have my faith. I still have hope. These are the things that we labor in. Thank you, Lord. These are the things that we labor in. So let us not be weary in well-doing. Amen. Plant your seeds. Expect the harvest. Because God is an expectation for it. We should be an expectation for it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's, um, let's go to Mark. Fourth chapter. We're almost done. Any questions? I'm sorry. Any questions or comments? Sister Angie, I thought I saw your hand up. Oh, no. Ac accidentally. Sorry. Okay. No problem. Uh, well, actually, I, actually, I was saying that I I I run out in the rain. 
I, I like the feel. <laughs> Amen. 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 I said I haven't seen it. Amen. I said I haven't seen it, but that's great. If you like to feel a rain, amen. I don't like it personally. I don't like I don't like getting all wet. I don't like it. I'm not a water fan, period. I don't like oceans. I don't like pools. So, amen. But God is still good, amen. And that's mainly because I can't swim. But that's something different. Amen. Let's go to Mark, the fourth chapter, in the 29th verse. <laughs> if you had it. But when the grain ripens. Immediately he puts it in the sickle because the harvest has come. Anybody knows what that pertains to? Any idea? Mark 4 29. What does that pertain to? The the uh, the harvest the fruit has grown has come up and now he's put in the sickle. I, I, um, and my thought was he was claiming his state, but no, he was put he put that in to um to uh, steady the 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 um the growth of the of that um of the fruit, the sickle, uh, something like that. You know what I'm saying to. To, to hold it, to keep it uh, up right and straight and all that. Well, yeah, that's so it doesn't fall over. Yeah, well, that's my thought. I don't know if that's right or not. <laughs> Maybe. Isn't that when, uh, when, the, when, the, when the fruit grows and then and after when it grows and then you get the sickle, then you, the sickle supposed to, you, you, I guess you cut it off, the fruit, Amen. whack it off, and then Amen. You reap the benefits of it. Oh. But in this particular chapter, Let's go up to the 26th verse. And Jesus is speaking. And he says, So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast a seed into the ground, and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring up, a uh, spring and grow up. He knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear. After that, the full corn of the ear. When the fruit is brought forth, immediately he put it in the sickle because the harvest is come. And it says in 30th, and he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God, or with what comparison shall we compare? It? Amen. So what Jesus is talking about in this uh, in these verses, he's talking about uh, the end times. Amen. He's talking about the harvest that's coming in the end. The kingdom of God. Amen. And it says that we should not sleep. And we rise night and day. And we grow and we spring up. So this is talking about the saints. Amen. We've been planted. Amen. And we've been seeds that have been planted. And then we grow. Amen. And we are fully. When we're full. When we have uh, reached completion. Jesus is coming back. And he's going to harvest us. Meaning that he's coming back and he's going to take us. We are his reaping. Amen. Jesus sowed the seed. We are what he reaps. This is uh, pertaining to his return. Him coming back to take his church with him. Amen. And I wanted to add that in there because all of this preparing to receive the harvest leads up to us leaving earth. If earth is our field. We're the harvest. And who's the sower? Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. He's coming back for his church. He's going to take us all. He's going to take us out of this field. And we're going to go reign with him. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that's what this all boils down to. So uh, let's go to our conclusion. Our conclusion. Can I ask, did, did we determine uh, what is the sickle itself? The actual sickle? The actual, yeah. He... Mm -hmm. the, the sickle is a, is a metaphor if we go to uh, in, in Revelation um, I believe it's 21 but the sickle is just it's just what they use to, to cut off the harvest but it's just a metaphor in this particular verse it's just a metaphor this is what Jesus Jesus is going to use a sickle basically saying that he's going to harvest us you can't harvest without a sickle amen oh okay Okay, um, I understand it's the now he's given the natural and br to bring out the spiritual. So I was just wondering, in, I was just wondering in the natural, 
what was what is the sickle is that some sort of tool that's being used or what yeah in the natural a sickle is it's a it's a big stick and it has a big blade on the end of it and it's like it looks like a hook and they take that stick and they go to the bottom they hold the crop from the top they swipe it from the bottom amen and then that's how they're able to reap so the sickle is just a big blade that's on the edge of the stick they slice the bottom of the crop, and that's how they get the crop out of the soil. Amen? That's the natural. Okay, that's good. So I have one other question or comment. Question. Um, yeah, no you said that Jesus is the one that's going to do the reaping, right? Yes. Coming to get us. So he's the reaper, and he's the one that, he's on both ends. Jesus is the one that... Mm -hmm. um, that breaks up the fallow ground, that prepares the ground for the seed? Is that what you said earlier? Because we are the sowers. Yes. Yes. So Jesus was before, before, you know, he ordained the disciples and, and they became apostles. Amen. Jesus did all the groundwork. Amen. So they just worked off of what Jesus had already started. This is why he said that they uh, are, are reaping uh, from a harvest that they did not labor in. Amen. Jesus had done all the labor. Yeah. So they just came in, they reaped from that harvest, and then from that harvest, they begin to plant seeds, and then they spread those seeds, and this is how we grow the church. This is why the seed means to scatter. We scattered it out, and now we're harvesting more. We're growing more saints, and the more we grow, in the end, we'll have a bunch to harvest. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I believe Brother Michael put the scripture in Revelation that talks about, uh, that talks about, uh, excuse me, the, the reaping. Amen. Revelation four, 14 verses 14 through 15. Yeah. So my, my, oh yeah. So my thought is, I just got a big picture of this. It's all Jesus. <laughs> he, he's breaking up the follow and he's the word. <laughs> so the seed is the word and then he's going to do the reaping. You know, it's Jesus. We're, we're, we're laborers with him. And <laughs> you know, I just saw all of that. It's, it's Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Amen. John tells us that he's the creator of all things. Amen. It takes the creator to bring the created back. Amen. But he's going to do everything. He started it. And guess what? He's going to end it. Amen. Sister T, I see your hand. Yeah, and that's when the harvest becomes plentiful. It gets fuller. The more we plant, Amen. the fuller the harvest gets. Okay, thank Amen. you. And that, and no problem. And that's why it's up to us. In this day and age, right now, amen, and I know we're done, so I'll just leave it this. In this time, this is why we have to be those who plant these seeds for those who don't know that Jesus Christ is coming back, amen. This is where you and I labor, amen. Get that gospel yes. out, amen. Share the gospel. And, 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 and again, a lot of times, people are not going to listen to the Bible. They're going to look at your life first. So make sure that your life is the light that they can come up and say, yo, why don't you ever smoke with us? Why don't you ever hang out with us? Why don't you do these things? Why are you so different? Guess what? Now there's a door that's open and you can plant a seed in that opportunity. Amen. Um, I'm going to go. Uh, that is all that we have for tonight. I thank you for your time. Um, I hope uh, that uh, you know, got a better understanding of uh, the harvest and, and what it means to harvest and to reap and to sow. I will give you back into the hands of our own sister kid. God bless you all. Amen. Amen. I, I know that I can't, you, you probably can't see me. The neighbors playing music so loud I have to come sit in the car. So, so I'm in the car listening to the lesson. But this lesson is also similar to not being fishermen, but being fishers of men. It's mm -hmm. all similar. Mm -hmm. So we want to thank Elder Terrell for that wonderfully taught lesson. So can we all please give him a hand for this beautiful lesson? Amen. And amen. Yes. So we do appreciate everyone that's coming on today. And again, God is good. So we're going to give you in the hands of um, our Elder Larry D. Cotton, please, and he can dismiss us as he see fit. Amen. Let Thank us you, see Elder. Him. Once again, give Elder Terrell a hand clap. Amen. What a marvelous job he done on tonight. Oh, man, he, yeah. he didn't only really, 
lesson. He preached this lesson. And mm -hmm. we thank God for, for you, Elder Terrell. Beautiful job on tonight talking about prepared to receive the harvest. And I love that uh, verse in Galatians. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Let's not faint. Amen. There's coming a time that we're going to reap what we have sown. We thank God for all of you. Thank God for our church mother and for our first lady. We praise God for all of you, our elders on tonight, all of our mothers that's on Mother McKnight. God bless you. What a wonderful job, Elder Terrell. Amen. Amen. It's a joy to sit yeah. back and to listen to the word of God. It's always good to hear the word of God. And we thank you. Elder Rushing, we have a word and dismiss us, sir. Thank you, Mr. Pastor. Thank God for you. My brother, I enjoyed you once again. You took your time in and you just taught the lesson and you walked us through those points. I think I got about four pages of notes, man, just sitting here. I'm, I'm a scribe tonight. <laughs> but it was just rich, 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 rich. Planting a seed and uh, watching that thing grow. And you just walked us through those steps um, of how the lesson applies to us. And I think that part was the most uh, invigorating because you show the application. And that that, that means the most, to, to me at least, when you show the scripture and then you show the application, now I know how it applies to me and how it makes me better. So I thank God for you, man. You you keep letting him use you and keep letting him uh, do what he wants to do with you. I certainly enjoyed you. Um, all I thought about was that song also that said, rain on my field. Holy Spirit, rain on my field. Amen. <laughs> enjoyed that. That's we pray and hand it right back to you. Um, Father God, we thank you now for your goodness and for your mercy. I thank you for our teacher on tonight and how you blessed him and you uh, seasoned him and strengthened him and encouraged him on tonight that he uh, broke that bread of life and he fed it to us. Lord, and we are strengthened and we are encouraged and we are invigorated and we are built up. And we so thank you for that on tonight. God, I ask that you continue to strengthen and give him exactly what he needs every day of the week. God, continue to just nurture uh, his tree. Keep digging around him, Lord, and keep letting his roots go deep that he might be stronger and impart that unto your people. In the name of Jesus, thank you for our shepherd on tonight. Thank you for our church mother and every member of this Faith Temple family. God, we adore you and we love you. Thank you for being so good to us. We thank you, we thank you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, and all of God's people said, thank God. Amen. 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 Thank God. And Amen. Amen. God bless you, Elder Rushing. And once again, we thank God for our president and for Elder Terrell on tonight uh, for this lesson. want to say on Friday night.